All right. So what are we what are we doing today? Did you send me anything, or do you have any problem uh, no. in verb lines? We don't have anything new. I'm sorry, what? We don't have anything new. Don't have anything new. Okay. So what should we do? You you're probably done with all the new stuff, right? Um, I think we're continuing more tomorrow, but I don't have any of what we're doing tomorrow yet. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to guess that at some point soon, you're going to end up reviewing for your semester final. Yeah, I think that's next week. Okay. Well, I have some of those. I have some semester finals from previous geometry students. In fact, I went through this with another student just yesterday. I'm trying to remember. Let me just look and see if I have one that says final. Hold on a moment. Algebra review. That's from this year. That could have been your stuff. Um, even. Hold on. I'm looking for something that might say review for final. Because that's what we really want to do. Julian Schott. Okay. His May stuff is probably going to be... Let's have a look at this. <sighs> what happened to it? There we go. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. They make me go to here. Well, this doesn't look very interesting, does it? There's nothing on here. All right. Go to a different page. Um, let's see. I ran into this problem with Dylan the other day. Um, I want to make sure we cover something that you're covering in the spring semester, not the fall semester. It's not going to let me open any of these. Well, I apologize for that. I haven't uh, realized before that I couldn't open these files. These are JPG files. How come I can't open these files? Open, oh, those are open with, let's see if we can open with this uh, office clone that I have. It should work. Yeah, it did. All right, this should be the kind of stuff that is on your final. Let me snap that left. Open that right, and let's go through some of these. Unfortunately, I've got answers on some of these, but this student, I have no idea if the answer is correct or not. Is that the proper formula for the sum of the interior angles of a polygon? Yes. So what's a seven-sided polygon going to have? Five minus two times 180. So, or seven minus two times 180. Okay. That's 900. Okay. All right. What's the formula for the measure of each interior angle? Um... Uh, 
that? I don't know. I can't remember. Well, what's the measure for the sum? Or what's that formula? N minus 2 times 180. How many angles are there? Um, seven. In terms of N. In terms of N? Uh-huh. Oh, just N. Right. So that's what each angle is. For a regular. And this is a regular polygon only where they're all the same angle. In other words, if you take the sum of the angles and you divide by the number of the angles, you get each angle, right? Yep. Well, that's what you'd get. In the case where there were seven sides, we have 900 divided by 7. Each angle is going to be what? Hundred and twenty eight degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have never figured out what this minimize restore down does. It has never done anything on my Windows system. That will minimize it and then I can get it back. Um to this, but there's some things here that don't seem like they they work the way they're supposed to work. Okay, number three, I'm sure you know how to do that. Number four, what's the strategy going to be? First of all, what's a heptagon? Heptagon is seven angles. Okay. What's the measure? So you just need to know the sum of the angles and then subtract um, the angle measures given and you get your answer. Okay, so we it was n minus 2 times 180. That's 900. Mm -hmm. So that's the sum of the angles. So how are we going to come up with the seventh angle? Subtract the angles listed in number four. All right. In other words, we're going to add up all six of these angles and subtract it from 900. Yep. All right. Number five. If the sum of the interior angles is 3780, how many sides does it have? And even though you're looking at the answer, what equation would I need? to figure that out. N minus 2 times 180. N minus 2 times 180 is what? Give me the equation. Equals um, 3780. And then how do I solve that? The best way to solve that e algebra problem. What's, um, the, best, what's the best next step? Do what? You could, you could distribute the 180 to the parentheses and get okay. uh, negative 180 plus 360. Right. That's a step, and that will get you the correct answer, but it's not really the next best step. There's a better step than that. Okay. How about if I divide both sides by 180 off the get-go? Now, the left side is going to be n minus 2 equals some number, and boom. I don't have to deal with big numbers. Whenever you're solving an equation, always see if you can find a way that reduces the size of your numbers. Notice that if I distribute that thing, well, right off the start, I got 180n minus 360. All of a sudden, I got big numbers. Now, it's not undoable. In other words, I'm still going to have uh, 
that, and then n will be that number divided by 180. But notice that if I divide by 180 first, I'm better off. I don't ever have to deal with this big number. Um, what's the measure of each interior angle of a regular 18 gun? Each interior angle? Uh-huh. So you do 16 times 180. Um, oh, so say again, I'm not quite hearing you. Okay, 16 16 times 180 times 180. Divided, by eight. divided by what? 18. Okay. And notice that actually works out Again. rather nicely. In other words, I would never multiply those numerators. I would always simplify. I don't need a calculator here. It's 100 by time. It's 160 degrees. Only because they made it so convenient to make 180 divisible by 18. Okay. measure of each interior angle. So, or not um, not necessarily each one. Oh, you can just if, if they're um each angle is equal then you can set one angle equal to another. Well they're not. That's not a regular polygon. But you don't need a regular polygon to apply the rule. It's eight sides, so it's eight minus two times one eighty which is 6 times 180, which is 1,080. So that's the sum of the angles. So what would you do next? Um, combine like terms. And set well, the write, write an equation. In other words, we, we know the sum is, is that. So tell me what the equation is. Geometry is always about writing an equation and solving the equation. So start the equation for me. If you get the first two terms, I'll go to the next problem. What's the equation going to look like? I can't see the details of the drawing, but what the kid has is 43x plus 268. Well, they got that by adding up each angle and setting it equal to 1080. So no matter where you start, it would look like, I'll start there, 8x plus 15 plus 139 plus 10x minus 11 plus 121. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay. And until I get to the eighth angle, I set that all equal to that. And then notice that we would have just one equation and only one unknown, x. They have not given us two unknowns. Every angle is a function of x. So then I would do like you said. I would combine like terms, solve for x. And then I would end. 
that's where they get the 43x plus 268. They've combined all of the x terms and the numbers and gotten that. Number 8. That is a regular pentagon because every side is the same. So tell me the process you would use to solve for x. You find the measure of each interior angle. Set the give me the equation. Give me the equation. Go ahead. Five times one eighty. I'm sorry. What? Five minus two times one eighty. That's the sum of all five angles. And then divide it by 5. That's the sum of, or that's each angle. What's that equal to? Three by 180 is 540. No, I, don't, I don't mean that. I mean the rest of the equation, looking at the picture. I can't see it. Oh, sorry. Uh, it says 7x plus 31. So that's what it's equal to. In other words, they're saying each angle is 7x plus 31. And so, again, once I have one equation and only one variable, I can solve for x. Let me see if I can... Why can I not blow this up? Uh, well, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> uh, seems like old pictures view completely different than new pictures. And I can't, some pictures I can't figure out how to rotate. This picture I can't really figure out how to blow it up or, uh, oh, here we go, down here. Yeah. But somehow I advanced to the next picture and I didn't mean to. Let me close that out. All right, let's see. What other stuff can we look at for the last few minutes here? Polygons was from first semester. Here we go. Polygon surface area. Yeah. This is good stuff. That was actually this semester. What's that? That was actually this semester. Surface area of polygon, polygons and digital shapes. Uh-huh. Do you remember the formula for the surface area of the right cone? The right cone? Um, yeah, this is, hold, hold on a minute, let me get this. In fact, I'm going to need to open my book. That's one of the few that I don't... Is it based on height? It's one half... <laughs> I think it's one half. one half radius times lambda, the lateral measurement.
start with? Um, um, the, radio. the surface area of this object is the base plus the lateral area. The lateral area being this area here. Okay. So what's the base? Um, pi r squared. Okay. And what's the lateral area? Um, it's um, pi r pi r times lateral. With that being lambda. Lambda. Okay. When they, yeah, when they use L for lateral length, it's usually called lambda. So it's a Greek letter rather than just L. But yeah, the pi r squared is going to give you that bottom. And assuming, like in this particular problem, they give you lambda. So what would the surface area of number 13 be? And hold on a moment. I can blow that up. See this picture I can blow up. The others I couldn't. OK, so you have pi 4 squared plus pi um, 4 times 15. Right. About 15. Um, 5 and 8, right, are the two values? Yeah, but it's a little different. In other words, the radius is 5 and the vertical height is 8. And since the surface area is a function of lambda, you got to solve uh, you can use, uh, lambda. You can use Pythagorean theorem to find lambda. Okay, uh, tell me what lambda is. So 5 squared plus 8 squared equals lambda squared. Which means lambda is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 8 squared. Yeah. Which is the square root of 25 plus 64, 89, which is a prime number. 9.43. Yeah, not simplifiable. But at least now we know lambda. We know r. So... The surface area was pi r squared plus pi r lambda. We know lambda and r. All right. Um, we don't have to do them, but just uh, a word on these problems at the bottom. Yep. These odd-shaped three-dimensional objects. How am I going to do, how am I going to do right? 22 conceptually? Um, you're going to solve for the surface area of a cylinder and then, all, and then solve for the surface area of a cone. Right. Almost. Notice that you only need the surface it. area of the lateral surface area of the of cone. Lateral, not the yeah, you don't need the base. The base is actually not part of the surface. So you only need one base, and you don't, and you need the lateral. Right. Well. There, the base of the cylinder is still there, so you would solve for the base of the cylinder plus um, the surface area of the cylinder is a little tricky. Remember the soup can with a label. Mm -hmm. If you peel the label off, you have a rectangle. So to figure the surface area of this part of the cylinder, it's the circumference of the circle times this height of 12. The circumference is um, 2 pi r. So this whole thing, yeah, this whole thing is going to be pi r squared for the base plus 2 pi r times 12 for the lateral part of the cylinder plus pi r 
lambda, and we're going to have to figure out lambda because they didn't give it to us. They gave us 4 and 6 as a radius, so we'd have to figure out lambda there also. But once you figure out lambda, then you could apply it. And all three of these figures, that's the way you do all of these kind of problems, is you break it up into figures that you know how to solve for surface area. And the only thing you have to be very careful of is, is that you don't include parts that aren't visible. In other words, this ice cream cone over here, that which would normally be part of the surface area of both cones is not part of the final figure at all, the base. It's completely hidden. In other words, this surface area on number 24 is strictly the surface area of that cone and the surface area of that cone, the lateral surface areas. All right. Cole, I will talk to you next Monday. Talk to you next Monday. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.